me start my timer because this is a lightning talk and I don't want to go long. Okay, so this is the flywheel theory of community engagement. Um, I normally have some housekeeping slides that I walk you through. We have five minutes. I'm not going to do it. You can read this. <clears throat> but the first question you might ask is, what is a flywheel? In physics, a flywheel is to simplify things, a machine that stores energy or smooths energy. So if you think about like on a car engine, you've got pistons going up and down and you're not actually getting smooth output, but then you put a flywheel on it and all of a sudden that uneven output becomes smooth output to the drive shaft. And so your car goes vroom instead of vroom, 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 vroom. But this isn't a physics talk. This is a community talk. So in a community, a flywheel does sort of the same thing, right? It's a person who helps keep the energy of a team going. Um, and the cool thing about a community flywheel versus a you know mechanical flywheel is that the community flywheel really just sets a floor for the energy, the output of a team. They don't really put a ceiling on it the way um, you know mechanical one. You're, they're not going to be absorbing excess energy and say, like, let's do less for a little bit. So why are they important? Well, in open source communities, you often have people who are volunteering. So, you know, they're doing this because they're interested in it. They're doing it on their own free time and they may have jobs or families or other hobbies or life that just gets in the way sometimes. Now, in the happy case, you have different contributors who are sort of coming and going and the amount of effort they put in varies over time, but they're sort of out of phase. And so the actual the effort of the team stays pretty high. You kind of absorb because, you know, one person's effort is going down while another person's is ramping up. But sometimes for often just for completely independent reasons, people just sort of get in phase and everyone's effort kind of drops at about the same time. And then the team's effort just sort of falls off a cliff. And once a team has sort of become stagnant and moribund, it's really hard to just get it self restarted. You have to kind of come in and give it a shove to get going again. So what does a flywheel do? Well, it's not necessarily per the person who is the formal leader of the team. It can be. It's not necessarily somebody who's doing the most work. It's not even necessarily somebody who's contributing to the direct output of a team. So if it's like a documentation team, the flywheel might not actually be writing a lot of documentation. If it's a design team, they might not actually be doing any graphic design, but they're sort of just the constant presence there to keep the team going that shows, hey, this team is active and people can come and go. Which means that if a new person comes up and they introduce themselves on the mailing list, they actually get a reply because there are a few things as disheartening as introducing yourself, getting ready to join this new project and just being met with silence lose your contributors that way before they even start. So how do you apply a flywheel to your project? And the dirty little secret of this talk is that it was sort of a way for me to try and help nudge my employer to maybe make a little bit more contribution. Because one of the things I found in my decade of contributing to the Fedora project is that the teams that have a flywheel Generally, that flywheel is somebody who's being paid by Red Hat to participate in Fedora. That's not always true, but by and large, the teams that have really been able to sustain themselves over a decade or more um, have somebody who can dedicate their time. And the cool thing is, is it doesn't have to be a full time person. I'm kind of making this up, but I suspect that as little as like three or four hours a week of just being present and showing activity in the in the team can be enough. Um, so when you're looking at the, the, the makeup of your teams in within your open source community, think about who is a flywheel. So either who has, you know, is being funded by a sponsoring organization to participate in the project, or who just consistently has that time and just, you know, show them the benefits and, you know, say, you know, here, you're the one responsible for helping to make sure we're being active. Um, goes a team that is active will stay active and a team that becomes inactive will need a lot of energy invested in it to get it restarted again. 
So that is the very unscientific, but you know, true in my experience, flywheel theory of community engagement. Thank you, everyone.